Hello there, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of A Friendly Chat About. Yes, this is once again another case of me doing a friendly chat about a book I edited rather than the book I wrote. If you would like a look into the warped psyche of the uh, author, please follow the link below to his video on the subject. However, if you would like my, um, my thoughts on exactly uh, what on earth I got myself into by editing this book, this is How to Lose Friends and Annihilate People. Now I have the hang of um, laying out books, this one was a lot easier to do than, say, uh, James's one, and I think it probably came out a bit better. Sorry, James. Um, but uh, laying it out wasn't too much of a problem, uh, though with the somewhat eclectic style of the writing, um, working out where um, paragraph jumps were supposed to be and where they weren't supposed to be uh, was another uh, question entirely. But because um, obviously this isn't going to be one of the uh, greatest bit bits of uh, um, traditional grammar, but it has some uh, fun little bits and pieces in here, and it's it is supposed to be, as you James said, disorganised schizophrenia. So it's not um, it's not uh, quite quite sort of traditionally laid out in that regard. But at the same, I wanted to preserve that whilst at the same time. Um, keep the thing looking good in terms of uh, how the text was laid out and make it not look too uh, inaccessible for people. And I think I managed to do that. Um, when it came to choosing a cover image, um, well, I did ask Alex if he wanted me to commission something and it w I told him it would probably take longer and he said, oh, well, go for stock art then. And in this case, the stock on I picked, picked this picture of hell here. This um, piece of artwork is very unusual in that we don't know who drew it. We don't know who drew it, or we know it was roughly around the same sort of era as some of the great masters, the old masters like Titan, and it's probably may have been a student of Titan because there's some of the same sort of stylistic tones, but it's not it's not a Titan. Um, and um, yeah, I thought I, I thought it was very good to have this this sort of piece that has it's been lost to history as to who drew it, and that in some ways is it, it makes as an interesting parallel with the uh, with the story, um, and. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's a good it's a good sort of surreal image to have on there. The uh, when it comes to the text being in red, I thought the text being in red would be a good idea because of the sort of infernal nature of the plot. It seems it wasn't such a good idea in hindsight. Some text may be difficult to read in some light. Um, not all light, but some light um, because. It um, it kind of fades, is a bit faded and a bit dark on the black background. I will aim to do something a bit more uh, clear in future. Probably revert to the orange I used before. Anyhow, all in all, it's it's a lovely little. But I, I decided to go for the pocket size because, well, I think this this suits sort of extended fiction a lot better than. The other choices, which were A5 or something called Royal, which seems a bit big, because it's bigger than A5 in some ways. Um, so I thought Pocket would suit it, 
and with size 12 text it comes in at around 235 pages which isn't too bad um, obviously this makes the print quite expensive compared with say Hugh James's book um, or other books I've got on my site but I think it's worth it because um, it's a lovely little little paperback and it's it's small enough that you can carry it around with you um, read it on the bus or whatever and yeah I do like that layout <laughs> Character-wise, this is a very interesting story, um, in that the main character discovers something he's been suspecting about his own identity since he was born, or since he started thinking for himself, and he's been, he's a quite a nice guy, so this revelation is quite a shock, and, uh, it is it is uh, very very strange um characters do actually have some depth and they do have some some rhythm but at the same time uh because of the style of the writing because of the way that um the the narrative jumps occasionally you will hear like half of, you would you, you'll suddenly read about half a sentence about one character or no about two or three sentences about one character and then they die or something or they're about to die or it, it, but it all ties in together eventually which is incredible um, in a book as utterly crazy as this that is pretty incredible <laughs> Story-wise, I don't think I can actually talk much about the story without blowing it all open and spoiling it for you. Um, but I can say that it is very much, as I said in the release announcement video, it's very much like a parody of um, uh, Left Behind or Apocalypse or any of these sort of far-right Christian speculations on what the apocalypse is going to look like. Only it's done from the point of view... Uh, it's from a completely different point of view. And in doing this, it's, it sort of um, blows a lot of things wide open. I think, for one, um, that although it is potentially offensive to some... I don't think it's as offensive as Alex thinks it is, for a start. Um, I think it has a it has a dimension to it that it's it's just um, it is very sort of condescending, and mocking to some degree, but at the same time it it, it sort of digs deeper into the uh, subconscious and um, makes you think twice about certain uh, received opinions, which is something I've always, always supported. Received opinions are very damaging in any society, as far as I'm concerned. A receipt, if something, everybody knows it, and nobody's questioning it, to some extent, depending on, well, uh, there may be a few exceptions, but if, 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 if nobody's questioning a particular aspect in society or a particular topic, that to me rings alarm bells, and although I'm as guilty as anyone of getting of uh, holding some received opinions, um, when it, things are all accepted, and the mainstream has basically declares them fact, that to me is a big red flag. Big whoa, there! We better double check this. Because, yeah, it goes down to the central nature nature of what is truth, and truth is very much in the eye of the beholder. And when you are this 
this lead character, Ebi, um, truth seems to change from one minute to the next. And not only that, but you have this kind of interconnectedness of all things thing going through it. Um, it does remind me somewhat of Douglas Adams' writing. Um, in well, mostly in the Holistic Detective Agency series rather than Hitchhikers, although Hitchhikers did a bit of this too, where seemingly unconnected events would just happen halfway through the, halfway through the story and then not get resolved till later, or not have, seem to have any purpose till much later. And um, the great thing about this is, although it may seem random that you're suddenly talking about some ran random bloke on the street um, who's about to die, when that person dies, it, um, it reinforces, it makes you care about them rather than it just being some random person. Um, who is just killed off for no reason. It's it's almost like someone's writing a horror movie but giving a decent sympathetic backstory to every character. And that hasn't been seen in horror movies for, for years. If you if you watch anything by Phalus or uh, Diamond the Hagen or any of these other um, critics and experts in horror is um, you know that uh, when it comes to slasher movies, you don't have sim you haven't had sympathetic characters for years, but this this book makes almost even sort of minor background characters into these fully fleshed out things, and in doing that, it really does an incredible job of making you not only weep for these individuals but weep for humanity, really. <laughs> I am pleased with how this book's turned out. I am pleased with quite an impressive uh, set of sales figures so far, um, by my standards anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's looking very good. Um, for stuff like this. Do do please let me know if you have anything else as crazy on the boil, Alex, because if it if it if it sells like this it should uh, it should be uh, quite uh, quite a, a good uh, source of income for us both. Um, but uh, yes the book is available with paperback at ten quid or the electronic book at three pounds. Uh, it's worth mentioning now that the electronic book has now been fully distributed. That means it's now available in the Nook store and on the iBook uh, store, which um, it makes it easier to get hold of. As I said in the um, release video, actually getting this stuff on Kindle is difficult because I don't want to put it under my own name, I want to put it under Alex's name and Kindle doesn't like that. Um, but yeah, I uh, I do um, do hope you pick this up and do hope you have a good read because it it certainly it certainly uh, is one of the most interesting books I've ever read, and that's not just ones I've had submitted to me. That's out of any book I've read, um, and yeah, I thoroughly recommend it. Hopefully by the next time I do one of these videos, it will be something of my own and it will be something um, something that will, that's been backlogged for a while. I do apologise about the backlog, but that's the nature of being a self-employed writer with mental health issues. Just focusing on things is very difficult. And I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Ta-ta for now!